Is Gilgamesh going to shift the rally meta, and will he be open field viable? I've got to say, this Wheel of Fortune commander is looking real good. In this video, we're going to talk about everything you need to know about Gilgamesh. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and in this video, sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms, I've got to talk about Gilgamesh, who... I cannot believe is already going to be shaking up the rally meta and will be very good in the open field. Now, we're in the middle of an archer week here, and if you like Rise of Kingdoms guides designed to help you get value and smash your enemies, or you just like archers, then smash that like button and do me a favor and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Let's talk about Gilgamesh. First, we're going to review the skills so that we can understand what the best pairs will be. We'll talk about those pairings, and I'll give you a few talent builds for Gilgamesh that I think are going to really slay. So, what makes Gilgamesh special? He's got utility, and he's anti-healing, baby. The active skill is going to make it so that he does 1,500 damage factor and reduces the health of the enemy by 30%. This is actually a lot of damage factor, considering that he has... Such a potent debuff. This, by the way, is an indicator to me that you want the active skill to fire as much as possible to keep a high uptime on that 30% health debuff. Note that active skills do not stack, so 30% health reduction from Gilgamesh should not stack with a 30% health reduction from Ethel Flood. That's very important to keep in mind. The second skill is boosting health, and that is the absolute most important stat to be boosting. Wow incredibly strong it also makes it so you do 20 percent extra damage with your archers against units that have fewer than 50 percent of troops remaining this is really really good for rallies there's just no way around it it might be good in the field it'll be okay you should target low health marches but that's really a rally optimization the next skill is explicitly for rallies only archers led by this commander gain 20% increased attack when attacking cities or strongholds and gain a 5% bonus every 6 seconds. This bonus lasts 10 seconds and stacks up to 6 times. So that's another 30% attack, a grand total of 50% attack. The thing that I find so weird about this and just honestly to be very confusing is that Amanatori counters this by removing the benefit of stacking attack bonuses. I just... Don't quite understand why they've released a counter to Gilgamesh at the same time that they released Gilgamesh. It's very interesting. It's unusual. The next skill is where things get really unusual, though. It's going to make it so you take 10% less damage from normal attacks. So not only do you have the health, but you have the normal attack reduction. That's the anti-swarm technology on this commander. And their attacks have a 30% chance of inflicting a blood-craving debuff on the target. And troops afflicted by this suffer damage, that's 500 damage factor when healed. The buff, or the, rather the debuff, lasts for three seconds and can trigger at most once every five seconds. So that means that you've got a 60% uptime at best for this debuff. And I mean, I mean, this, this is just straight up going to crush Richard the First. Like, he has been getting countered over and over and over and over again. And not only is here yet another Richard the First counter, but Zenobia is going to struggle to deal with this, I think, as well. She heals, and Gilgamesh is going to crush that. But it gets worse. The expertise skill makes it so that now, instead of 10% less damage taken from normal attacks, it goes up to 15. That is some really fierce anti-swarm. It really is. It reduces the damage you take from normals quite substantially. Also, that blood craving now does 700 damage factor. Also, when the blood craving is active, the target takes 15% more skill damage. Wow. That is a lot of skill damage taken by the target. That utility, reducing health and making the target take more skill damage, is very, very powerful as a combination. It also extends the duration of the buff by one second so in a perfect world you have 80 percent uptime 80 percent uptime on this debuff it is very savage i think that zenobia is going to be in some trouble and i think that all of these skills point me in the direction of a commander that certainly will be good for rallies could also be good in the open field and 
is going to want to generate as much rage as possible to fully leverage this health reduction debuff to keep a high uptime on that. In case it wasn't obvious, the skill investment order on this commander is going to be the max the first two skills, then you skip the third skill and max the fourth skill. Because if you're using this commander for open field and not rallying, which is what I assume you're going to do if you're looking at an unmaxed commander, then you obviously want to skip the skill over here that is used primarily for rallying. So what does this mean for pairings? Who would I put Gilgamesh with? And there's really two commanders that stand out to me. The first is going to be Cyrus the Great. Now, Cyrus the Great has a rage engine when you've expertised him. He's got instant proc damage over time when you're in the open field. Also, instant proc AoE damage if you're getting targeted. And march speed and some attack. It's really, between the two of them, a very nice combination of offensive punch and some amount of tankiness and march speed. I think the two will work really, really well in the field. And you're going to want to have Gilgamesh be the primary commander so that you can apply that health reduction and then smack him with the Cyrus skill. That seems like the way to go. Similarly, I feel like Nebu would do very well for all the same reasons. He's got a huge amount of area of effect damage, but the single target damage is really high too, 2,000 damage factor. So you reduce the health of the target and then crush him with some big damage. I like the tanky stats here on the Nebu. The march speed's really good. The extra damage boost is solid. The rage manipulation is great. Uh, I think that those two in the field will be a very worthy and fierce combination, and I generally do like the area of effect damage on Nebu a whole heck of a lot, even though he doesn't have the rage engine, which Cyrus does have and Gilgamesh wants. Now, the third pairing I would think of for archers with Gilgamesh is actually, weirdly enough, going to be Esong, and Esong generates rage, boosts attack, does a lot of AoE damage, so you use Gilgamesh primary to reduce the health of the target, and then boom, smack him with a big AoE. And along the way, perhaps you generate a little bit of extra rage, which will make that active skill fire off just, you know, a little bit faster. I like that combination a lot. There are some combinations, however, that don't really excite me. And those archer pairings that I'm not as thrilled about include Artemisia. You don't really want to silence Gilgamesh. You want that chain of debuffs to fire off as fast as possible. I also don't love El Cid because just in general, El Cid's kind of he's kind of second rate with the exception of, you know, this fourth skill, which only kicks into gear when you're getting really, really low, which really is something, I mean, is used as a support skill in Heroic Anthem. And I don't know, that, that really is the beginning and ending, in my opinion, of El Cid's greatest sort of utility. He wants a rage engine as well, but Gilgamesh doesn't exactly have one. His talents are, are fine, but but not gangbuster. Also, I don't like Tamaris as a pairing, and this is all like the same reasons I've been describing here. She wants a very slow skill cycle. Gilgamesh wants a fast skill cycle, so that doesn't make a ton of sense. And on the topic of fast skill cycles, I mean, you could pair with a Monitori and have her be the primary commander, use that support tree to fire off skills faster. You uh, are going to boost your damage dealt and then hit them with a 1500 damage single target nuke. I think this is fine. I like the very high uptime uh, of the debuff that you'll get by virtue of having the support tree. I like the tankiness of the support tree. I don't think it would be bad, but if I'm being perfectly honest, if I'm going to bring and really commit a march in my five march murder ball, I think what I would do is actually carve out Esong. I would get rid of Esong. I know that's crazy. And instead, I would probably use Gilgamesh and then pair with Nebu. That would be the way that I would weave him into my murder ball. And as crazy as that sounds, making the main target I'm hitting have 30% reduced health and take 15% more skill damage, I mean, I am just going to explode those targets. They are done for. So that's why I really like bringing Gilgamesh into that situation. I'm a big fan of commanders that are not only doing lots of damage, but also bringing a lot of utility as well. And that combination of things is just incredibly powerful. So there are a lot of really good pairs for Gilgamesh. And I, of course, I haven't mentioned Ramses yet. And I think that's certainly worthy. Um, Ramses is a commander that 
he really would like a bit of a rage engine and, and really doesn't have one. He is going to make it also so that the target is immune to healing effects. And depending on how this interaction works with Gilgamesh, does this make it so that if they're immune to healing and the enemy tries to heal, will they still take the damage from the debuff from Gilgamesh? Or do they get away scot-free? I feel like there's some anti-synergy there that probably doesn't make sense, but we're going to have to test it to see how that goes. And for that reason, I think the number one rally pair is not going to involve Gilgamesh and Ramses, but I think it's very clearly going to be Gilgamesh and Nebu. That's my prediction here. There's a number of reasons why that's the case. First of all, 30% counterattack is terrifying. So you're reducing the normal attack damage you take by 15%, and then on top of that, you deal 30% more counterattack back. God, you just don't want to swarm Nebu. Plus, he does damage back to people. He does sort of revenge damage to people that are hitting him, and it's 800 damage factor, which is really crazy. Also slows the march speed, but that can only trigger once every five seconds. I think that the Nebu rally with Gilgamesh as the primary is going to be really terrifying. That, I think, is going to give Zenobia a run for the money. I think, finally, perhaps we'll have something that gets that job done. And when it comes to talents, I actually have put the talents onto the Nebu so that we can get a look at that here real quick. And there are three builds. These are the same trees that Gilgamesh has, so we can show them to you over here. This is an open field Nebu build that I really enjoy. It's reducing the counterattack damage that you take. It's missing a little bit of the rage gen, but still gets a lot of that from the skill tree, reduces the skill damage you take and the skill damage you deal, gets some extra stats. I think this is a great open field build, and I probably would use this if I was going to bring Gilgamesh to the open field. Uh, but if you wanted to go all in on that rage engine idea to apply the health debuff just as much as possible, then you'd have to go all in on the skill tree. And if you, what you value is that utility and getting that health debuff applied faster than all the other active skill cycles of your other commanders, which is obviously worthwhile because then all of the other commanders do elevated damage because you've reduced the health of the target. I think in that case, Feral Nature's an Really interesting idea at the very top of the skill tree. I also went and I said, you know what? I want the march speed. I want the extra skill damage in the right side of the archer tree. I want the rage gen from Razor Sharp. And I picked up a bunch of attack off to the side over here as well, just getting kind of as many stats as I could for archers. And there is one other build. It's an archer build here that's more focused on skill damage. And I think this could also be powerful if you're less worried about the tankiness that Buckler Shield affords you, you could go all the way over to Clarity. So after using an active skill, you increase your skill damage by 6%. So if you go for a Rage Engine combination, like with Esong, or perhaps you're using a Cyrus to generate extra Rage, or you use a Horn of Fury and do some of those things, the more you fire off your active skills, the more skill damage you're going to deal. I think that's really potent. This could be a really great build that... Also, by the way, affords you a little bit of extra march speed as well. I think this could be very good in the open field. And testing will have to reveal kind of which of these is the most performant. I do think that offhand, though, this is probably the build that I would go with. Uh, in part because frequently in big brawls, you only get one skill cycle anyways on an enemy before you potentially break combat or have deleted them. Uh, if you've got, like, really high-powered marches, which, you know, kind of I do. So I think this is more likely to be my build. If you think you'll be in fights for longer, this skill build could be really good. And if you really do want to get the debuff on there faster and you're going all in on that plan, especially if you're using Cyrus as a combination, because every time you use a skill cycle, he's going to help you generate more rage. I actually think... With testing, we could determine if this Rage build is the way to go. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Is Gilgamesh going to change the game? How important is this Blood Craving debuff going to be? I think that Gilgamesh could shift things in a very significant way. So much so that I just don't know that garrisoning will ever be the same. Can you just plan to garrison one thing? Or do we now need to really pay attention to what the enemy is rallying with and switch around the captains on the fly to try to counter it the best. If you enjoyed this video, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. More Archer Week goodness coming later this week. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.